Hello everyone! Today I am here to talk about all of the books I read in the month of May. So May was a really good month for me. I read 11 books. I'm officially out of my reading slump. Round of applause. I knew it would happen when warmer weather came to me. That was probably the biggest factor of my reading slump. Like winter, I just, I get bad seasonal depression. That and then being newly pregnant, it just, it, it, it just happened that way. But now it's warmer, so I'm outside more, which gives me a lot more time to read. So yeah, 11 books read. Um, I've reviewed some of these, um, whether it be recent reads videos and things like that. So um, there are some books that I probably go into more detail about through different videos, which I will link any recent reads, more review videos down below in the description box and in the cards above in case you want to hear about more. But yeah, 11 books is a lot to talk about. So as always, I'm going to start my least favorite working up to my favorite. So the first book I want to talk about is a YA thriller called The Ivies by Alexa Dawn. So this is a thriller that caught my eye because of the cover. The cover is very intriguing. I really enjoy the cover. And the synopsis sounded really cool. It was about these group of girls that are in this private boarding school and they're called the Ivies. Like their group is called the Ivies because they are known to like be very cutthroat. They each are like assigned a college, one of the Ivy League schools. Like one of them is assigned to Harvard, other one's assigned to like um, Brown, um, things like that, and Yale, all those other stuff. So that's like their that's their goals. They assign colleges. So they don't have any competition because if you know, if like you're really into college, which I'm really not, but um, if you're really like into the the emissions of college games, you can know how cutthroat it can be. You know, certain colleges won't like except a couple of students from like a really prestigious school. So they made each girl have a different school so there wouldn't be any sort of crossover, no sort of animosity, no sort of competition. Well, easier said than done. We follow a character named Olivia who is a newcomer to kind of the Ivy. She is not really born into money. She got into this boarding school um, with a lot of scholarships and things like that. And she's assigned one particular college, but she doesn't really want to go there. She wants to go to Harvard because that's been her dream. But the main girl, the head of it all, I forget her name, is the one that's assigned to Harvard. So when college admissions come out, or I should say early acceptances come out, the main girl learns that she did not get, get into Harvard, but Olivia did, and she keeps it hush-hush. But apparently another friend of the group, another one of the Ivies, also applied to Harvard and also got in, and she's much more vocal about it. And then basically the whole book is that Emma, that's the girl, the other girl that got accepted to Harvard, ends up dead the next day. So you're trying to figure out who kills her, what's going on. Olivia's like learning, are these Ivy girls really my friends or are they really not? And that's kind of the whole premise of the book. I'd say if you love books set in like boarding school, like kind of really just rich teenagers that are like, whoa, it's me. I didn't get into the Ivy League of my choice. I couldn't really compare, I couldn't really relate to it at all, which is, you know, on a multitude of levels because I'm out of the age bracket for it, which I recognize. So take my rating with a grain of salt as always with my ratings. Um, and number two, I just don't come from the whole boarding school life, things like that. I didn't really go to college. So I didn't really go to like a fancy college or things like that. So I don't get it. But I mean, if you want a cutthroat world of like Gossip Girl with some like really intense college admissions, maybe check it out. I'm not gonna lie, I ended up giving it a 2 out of 5. I just really just didn't enjoy it. That's the sad matter of it. <laughs> Next up is a book that I have reviewed. I did like a whole thriller one and that is For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. Again, this is set in another kind of private school. And this one we follow a multitude of characters. We follow a student that goes there, we follow a teacher and other teachers. And basically what happens is a slew of people get murdered and you know who did it. This is not like a whodunit type of book at all. You know who's done it. You're just kind of discovering their motives and how evil and manipulative people are with what they want in their own lives. So I give this one a three. Maybe I'm just not meant to read like boarding school type of books. Maybe they're just not for me, obviously, as my two least favorite books this month were set in boarding, like private schools, boarding private schools, you know what I'm saying? But I just, I don't know. I just didn't like any of the characters of this book, which I think was the main point of it. All these characters are very unlikable, um, which I understood, but I just, I just didn't love it as much as 
her previous two other books by Samantha Downing that I have read before. So I gave it a three. It's not like the worst thriller I've ever read. It's an adult one, but I just didn't like it nearly as much as my lovely wife or he started it. Another three star is While We Were Dating by Jasmine Gilroy. Again, I did kind of a deep dive review into this one as well. This one, huh. I said in that video, I never remember Jasmine Gilroy's books. I think this one is about a guy named Ben who's like the head of a marketing team and he gets assigned to work with, he gets, to, he has to like pitch this cell phone like um, kind of marketing commercial thing and the person that's going to be the head of it all is a character named Anna. Anna, I think is her name. She's like a famous actress. She's going to be the star of it all. And she's there and she meets Ben and they kind of hit it off and they begin fake dating to kind of help, um, you know, boost her stardom because she's a big premiere coming up. And that's the whole gist of the book. It was okay. All of her books I found are just okay. They're great summer reads because they're cute, they're romantic, um, but they just don't feature much in them. They're not much to grip upon, if that makes any sense. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I have heard that a lot about her books. I like them, I enjoy them while I read them, but afterwards I'm like, I don't remember any. <laughs> So yeah, three star for me. I promise and all the books I read this month are just like kind of average. <laughs> Another three star is Heartbreak for Hire by Sonia Hartel. So this one comes out in August, I believe. And I, I was really hoping to really love this one because it sounded really cool, but I just, I didn't. Um, so this one is about this character named Brinkley. So it works for this place called Heartbreak for Hire. So it's a secret service that specializes in revenge for jilted lovers, frenemies, and long suffering and long suffering coworkers with a little cash to spare. Basically, it's a company where it takes down men. And she is like in charge, I think, of the like really the egos. You know, she like a female will hire them to like take another coworker, take another guy, take his ego down a few notches because it might be a little bit up there. And basically Brinkley gets assigned to this um, job at the very beginning of the book and she meets this guy and she's attracted to him and it's never happened to her before. And they kind of hit it off, but she's like, this is, you know, my job. I can't do this. And turns out, her boss decided to shake things up and hire some men to do some revenge on females. And who should be one of the hires is the guy that she was actually assigned to take down, Mark. So they're paired together to have to work together. So it's kind of like an enemies to lovers type of thing. And it sounded good, like, but then I think about the whole revenge thing. And I'm not a revenge person by any means. Like, I'm not, I, I'm just not. So I just didn't love how it was always combating, like men and women. Um, I did like how women stood up for themselves and they were like, you know, we need to change the system because men think they're superior, which can be very true a lot of times. But I don't know, I just something rubbed me the wrong way about it. Maybe it was just me and the romance. It was okay. I just again, it wasn't super memorable or rememberable. I forget the actual word that you say for that. But I gave it a three. It was it was just okay. Like I said, I think this one comes out in August, if I'm not mistaken. Just kidding. It comes out July 27th. We're close enough to that, so there you go. Then I decided to read a Tessa Bailey book that had been sitting on my Kindle for a long time, and that is Getaway Girl. This is the first book in her series. I've read a lot of Tessa Bailey books. She writes a lot of adult steamy books, just in case you're forewarned. This one is about um, a character named Addison Potts who decides to like show up at her cousin's wedding that she hasn't really seen in years. And she gets there and <laughs> her cousin, the bride, does not show up. And so she like goes to her car and she sees the groom like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? And she's like, I'll offer him a ride. And they become friends and then something more. It's all about her and Elijah, who's actually going to be the future mayor of Charleston, South Carolina. And it's about their romance and it was cute I give it a three and a half out of five it was steamy I like the plot of it I think I will read the second book I think it's called Runaway Girl I'm not gonna lie I do enjoy Tessa Bailey's books but there's not much to talk about it next up is one that comes out in September I'm sorry I'm reading a lot of head in advance because if you don't know I'm having a baby in September so I'm not gonna be reading for like September probably for the like September on to the rest of the year so I'm trying to read any book that I can that I'm interested in that comes out in the later half of the year now because I have time now and I don't you know 
it's, it's what it is. So anyway, I read When Sparks Fly by Helena Hunting. I've read three other books by her, really enjoyed it. This one follows two characters. Oh my gosh, I forgot their name. Ebook reading always has me like this. The book follows Avery and Declan, who have been friends since college. They've never had any like romantic feelings towards each other, but basically the book starts with they need to go on a trip together, but Declan bails the last minute because he has a hookup and she has to take her car that is really not reliable and she gets in a bad car accident. She's okay and everything, but she's wheelchair bound and can't really walk a lot for the next few months. And Declan obviously feels very horrible and very guilty about it. So he like um, works from home and takes care of her. And through that, they and they learn maybe that they've had feelings for each other all along and they're just now realizing it. So it's a friends to lovers that's kind of over 30. I found it to be really, really cute. What did I give it? I gave it a four out of five. I liked it. I didn't like it nearly as much as her previous book, Kiss My Cupcake, but it was just a few one just a really great organic friends to lovers romance I would recommend this one we have a thriller survive the night by Rally Sager his fifth book I think it is um I gave this one a four out of five I enjoyed it again not nearly as much as his previous book home before dark this one follows a character named Charlie who is kind of escaping college because of a multitude of reasons and she like finds this ride on this ride share board this is set in the 90s by the way or maybe the late 80s I forget and it's a guy she doesn't even know they had to leave in the middle of the night and as they're driving, as you know, she learns that she does not know this guy that she's riding with and maybe he's hiding a lot more than she thinks he is because another subplot of this book is that there's this campus killer on the college and nobody knows who it is and things like that. And she's like, crap, am I riding with the campus killer? And it takes place all in one night. It goes through like kind of hour by hour and it's definitely very interesting. I think there's a lot of twist with a lot of thrillers. There's multiple twists. There there's one I think that is very predictable. There's a couple that I really enjoyed. Overall, I liked it. I liked the nostalgic kind of of a 90s kind of horror type of thing. And it just wasn't, mm, it wasn't as good as Home Before Dark. I love that one, but I liked it. I liked it a lot, so I gave it a four out of five. Speaking of thrillers, the other thriller I read this month was Final Support Group by Grady Hendrix, which I also gave a four out of five. This one, is intense. I would even classify this as th horror probably. I probably should look it up on Goodreads and I will not be surprised if it's labeled as horror. Um, but I read this because I read his previous book last year, The Southern's Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, and really enjoyed it. So this one, if you can guess by the title, is about Final Girls, which I'm sure you've heard because of this book. I'll talk about that. But basically you have a whole group of girls of final girls, which if you don't know what a final girl is, it's the last girl standing at the end of a horror movie pretty much. There's one person left. It's usually a final girl. And they have all had traumatic things happen to them. And we follow one character predict particular, I forget her name. Um, and she has, her life has been really tough. She's been very paranoid. She keeps her house locked up. And basically through the course of this book, she learns that somebody's trying to kill off all the final girls, but nobody believes her. So she goes on this whole mission to save all the final girls and to prove that there is somebody after them and I liked it. It's very, very gory. I say if you are like not into gore, which I am not, it was very tough for me to read this, stay away from it. If you know that doesn't bother you, go for it. But if you also like a lot of nostalgic horror movies like Scream, um, Friday the 13th, any of the Halloween movies, um, like you know those kind of classic psycho stuff like that, they are very reminiscent. They talk about each of the final girl scenarios of how they became to be final girls and they're like straight taken from that those movies, which is fun to read about, um, but also scary. <laughs> so a lot of people have asked me, is this a total ripoff of final girls? I mean, they're both about final girls. I don't think it's kind of the extent of it. It. This one's much more tamer, I would say. Um, and Grady Hendrix really goes into the dissect, like the dichotomy of a final girl and how it's really affected them. So they're the same, but also different, if that answers your question. But I gave it a four. It was interesting, it definitely stuck with me because it was scary. Next up, I have an adult romance, and that is Very Sincerely Yours by Carrie Winfrey, which I gave a four out of five. This one follows two characters yet again named Teddy and Everett. Teddy is in the beginning of this book in a relationship and that's kind of all Teddy is is this relationship. She just pours herself into this relationship. So when the guy breaks up with her, she's like, 
who am I? So she works at this kind of toy store and she's trying to figure herself out. And she watches this like children's program called Everett's Place. Think of like Mr. Rogers Neighborhood where it's about Everett and he has puppets. It's kind of like a local children's network um, show, I guess you could say. And she's like, I'll write him an email for advice because why not? So they start writing emails back and forth. It becomes an email relationship and it's super cute. I'd say if you're a big fan of You've Got Mail, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. This is a cute one to read. It had the email relationship. It was just sugary sweet. I, I just really liked it. It was like a cutesy summer read that I enjoyed. I didn't give any books five stars this month. I actually can't remember last time I gave a five star. I don't know what it is, but the last two books I want to talk about are both like contemporaries. I gave them both four out of five. I don't have a definitive favorite this month, honestly. So the first one, Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. I read this because the cover, it's got so many classic like rom-coms on here, which is my jam. <laughs> and each of the chapter headers is a quote from a rom-com, like 10 things I hate about you. You got mail. I was like, oh, I love this. I love this so much because it's me in a book. <laughs> but in this book, we follow a character named Liz, who's obsessed with rom-coms. She has been since her mother has passed away. And she's always thought her life would be a rom-com. And then one day, this guy from her past kind of walks back in her life and she's like, this is it. This is my opportunity for the rom-com I've always wanted. And so she enlists her neighbor next door, Wes, who, you know, she's always gotten along with, but you know, he's annoying. He's the annoying next door neighbor to like help kind of, you know, get him, get the guy involved with her. But of course you can guess where it's going to pan out. Her and Wes start to have feelings for each other. You get it. It's super predictable, super cheesy. I was hundred percent there for it. I liked it. Four out of five. Super cute, great summer read in my opinion. And I just say, if you like rom-coms, you'll probably like this because, you know, they reference it so insanely much, which I'm always down for. <laughs> and the last book I wanna talk about is the new Morgan Madsen book, Take Me Home Tonight. So this book takes place in one night. We follow a multitude of characters, mainly Kat and Stevie, who are best friends and kind of opposites. And somehow they go to New York um, City because they're in Connecticut and they decide to go to New York for the night and they get separated somehow and they each have their own different adventures. And it's just a really fun book. It reminded me a lot of Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist of like adventures in babysitting, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It's just, you know, it's kind of like a Murphy's Law type of book where like if something's gonna go wrong, it's gonna go wrong in this book because they're each without phones, they can't contact each other. It's just kind of a fun, night adventure of a book that's all i can say is this my for is this my favorite morgan madsen book i don't know i think i might do an author morgan madsen video very very soon because i do want to figure out which one truly is my favorite but i really enjoyed this one i had a really fun time with it the reviews have not been the best of it but I definitely liked it a lot more than her previous book, Save the Date, which I was not the biggest fan of. So I like that it was kind of told in one night. It was an adventure. We followed multiple characters, so I didn't feel like it got stale at all. And I love there's one girl's plot that is totally, totally, like completely obscure and like doesn't make sense at all. But I had a really fun time reading it. And it's a great summer read in my opinion. So I give it a four out of five. That's all the books I read this month. 11 books, a lot of books. So I plan to read a lot for June, July, and, and August. And then after that, probably zero. So just get ready for that. I would love to know what you guys read this month. Please let me know if you read any of the same things. And that's about it. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.